It's just, oh, hello? Oh, okay, it's still on. Okay, now a, a commentary on the uh, abuse of uh, drugs and uh, alcohol. Put the Canadian away. Uh, by the uh, natives on the uh, reserve. <clears throat> Out of the 5,743 5, people on the Brockett Reserve, uh, uh, it, first of all, it's it's not true that most Indians are drunkards and bums. This is a misconception. Most of the drunkards are just lying around, and and the bums we never see them anyway. Uh, out of these Indians, uh, only three are not drunkards and bums, but we are working on them very hard to get them uh, uh, associated with the rest of us and to see, make sure that they see our way of thinking and drinking. Uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, been a long time, sweetie. Uh, <laughs> I forgot where I was. We stopped with the food. Okay, I can go. I'm going home now. I had a better day for this. Well, that's a little harsh. I hear a lot of things in life, sometimes good, sometimes bad, and well, sometimes ugly. That you're listening to is called Rocket 99, and it may fall into all three depending on where you're coming from. Well, that little planet we're approaching, well, that's called Earth to some, it's the world to others. Well, on that world, Back in a time called the 1980s, some radio people got together in a land called Canada, in a place called Southern Alberta, to make a parody about radio. And to do this, they assume the roles of Aboriginals, Indians, Natives. Well, they have a whole lot of other names too. It turns out this tape they made for comedy for themselves and their friends was so good or so bad or whatever that had found a home in cassette machines, car stereos, and ghetto blasters all across their little province. Eventually, the tape grew so popular that it traveled clear across Canada and even went to other lands, including here, 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 and even here. Well, it turns out that tape wasn't funny to everyone. But well, for some reason, it caught on. No one really knows who made it or why. It wasn't sold, marketed, or distributed. It just got around like anything else, I guess. Like anything else that got around. Now it's got a life of its own. This is a story about Canada. Now don't leave right yet. It's a journey into the Canadian psyche, as Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people talk about the Brock 99 tape, Canada, and everything in between. This is a tale about a tape made here, parroting a people from there. Before we go anywhere, we gotta start here. This is Rocket 99, rocking the reservation in stereo. Brother. Up and Adam, it's 8.30 on the reservation with Ernie Scar. Take your dink and sink it in the pink. Our first feature of the morning time for our first feature, Harley Squirrel Nuts is in the studio. This is Harley Squirrel Nuts coming to you from Rocket 99 Studios. And uh, first off, uh, we'd uh, like to make a few announcements. There will be the Indian Days that will be held at Kamloops, British Columbia on August the 15th, 16th and 17th. And everyone is welcome. You can do this handheld, hand. Yep. The road movie as documentary, eh? And documentary is making a road movie. There are, there are some places up there, that's the tech building. But if we go to the left here, there's these, these sort of concrete super steps. That was pretty good with his eye line then, right? Yep. I leaned up a bit. Yep. Great, I'm having a split again. Uh, Just give me a second here. My name is Martin Whittles. I'm professor of anthropology at Thompson Rivers University. I first encountered Brockett 99 in the summer of 1995. 
And it was during the summer of 1995 in a course that had a lot of Aboriginal content in it that a student from that course came to my office and asked if he could write uh, a research essay on Brockett 99. I soon became aware that Brockett 99 was really quite broad in its appeal, that not only had people in southern Alberta heard this tape and in fact enjoyed it, but I was increasingly encountering people from British Columbia, from the prairies, uh, from Eastern Canada, and later still, uh, people in Western Europe who'd actually heard Brock at 99. I think it's clever in the sense that the production values that we see in the tape are actually quite sophisticated. Um, the use of interplaying voice and music, the use of um, radio advertising uh, copy for Canada Safeway, for Penner's Menswear in Tabor, for Travel Alberta, Beaver Lumber, these sorts of things. This was not a basement tape done by a couple of 15-year-old kids. This thing was slick and polished, and I found that even more disturbing. What they've done is they have skimmed off the surface stereotypical images of barroom humor and they've, they've, they've made an amalgam of these things that appeal already to, to a racist base out there. I've always taken as a social scientist a kind of act-centered approach to racism. That racism is not so much what you think, but racism is what you do. And when, race, when, when racist thoughts become racist actions is when they actually have a negative impact on somebody's life. Can you tell us where Alberta is? It's about 600 kilometers and 50 years due east that way.
fresh corn on the cob is irresistible, especially at Safeway's low prices. This week we got Washington Grown Canada number one corn on the cob. Value priced at three cobs for 88 cents. Do it right. Fuck. Yeah, more, we're part Fucking of shit. Safeway, Safeway. Sorry about this. I didn't know it was. Fucking goddamn whitey produced fucking commercials. How's it going? There you go. Are you taping? Hey, what's controversial about Brock at 99? Stereotypes. It's yeah, a stereotype. Go. Homer Simpson's funny. He's a stereotype. Brock at 99 is poking fun of the stereotype, yeah. There you go. And these guys are documenting why people are uh, prejudiced. <laughs> I laughed at it growing up. Did you? Everybody did. I knew a lot of uh, native people. I went to school with a large native population that actually listened to Brockett and watch, or listened to it and really enjoyed Brockett 99 and thought it was quite funny. But there's a, a line you got to draw, you know. It's uh, <laughs> I find it funny myself. Oh, sure. I grew up with Brockett. Oh, sure. We grew up. I actually grew up by a reserve, and I thought it was quite funny. But there is a line you have to draw. There you go. There's the politically correct perspective. <laughs> I heard the tape, it was at least 10 years ago. A co-worker of mine, I was working for the federal government at the time, which I'm Glad to say I'm not anymore. Uh, shared the Brockett 99 cassette with me, uh, but I had to promise to return it. I think it's a super racist and offensive tape, uh, but it still makes you laugh. And so perhaps the value of the tape is, is uh, hidden in there. Why does it make you laugh when in fact, it's not really a very constructive or productive piece of art. The part that's fucked up about it is that there are still people that it's not a stereotype and it's 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 not something that you laugh at and you know that it's not real. There's caricatures of all kinds of races and all kinds of walks of life and you can laugh at them and you know that that's not really the truth. It's a caricature and it's funny. But it's a dangerous thing because there's a lot of people that don't perceive it to be anything other than a, a pretty accurate depiction of reality. You know, I don't know how I feel about the fact that I laugh about Brock at 99, because it does make me laugh, but I still think it's fucked up that it makes me laugh. I'm straight against the sun, though. Uh, that's all right. You look you, you look good with that light. It's yeah, but the, the the film's not going to be too good. It's straight against the light. Okay, I heard Brock at 99. Probably, I don't know. I'd say it was like maybe 16 or 17 years old. At first, I found it just hilarious. But then, after educating myself a little more uh, about the boarding school situation, especially in Alberta, things like that, that that and 
that contribute to native problems and things like that, I found it disgusting and I think it's a totally repulsive work, but I actually own it, so I'm quite ignorant in some other ways. It just, it's promotion for racism. It's basically points native peoples out as drunks and incompetents. Before you mentioned that it made fun of Safeway, it does not make fun of Safeway. It makes fun of native people that can't make a Safeway commercial because they're too drunk and too stupid to make a Safeway commercial. Oh, I fucked up. Goddamn fucking whitey commercials, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Always mix things up. All right, it's 88 cents for the fucking corn. Blah, 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 blah. It's disgusting. It's like disgusting what it points at. It says nothing to Safeway. It says everything about natives. Lots of people laugh at it. Lots of people don't care. Lots of people, uh, they're constantly assaulted in things by people after the bar. When I was younger, I knew a group of guys that used to go Indian beating after the bar. Beat up bums sleeping in the park across the street from the bar, things like that. It's an extreme problem in Lethbridge. Very, very, very big problem. And it's ignored, and this tape just promotes people to see, to, to poke and laugh at a problem that needs to be addressed completely, and it's not being addressed. How do we address that problem? How do they well, through education, it's working right now, but if, if, I don't know if you guys researched the boarding schools in Alberta. They're extre they were so extreme. That's, 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 a, that's it's creating a generation problem that's persisting. So I mean, through education and things like that, things have been addressed somewhat, but I mean, the immediate problem for the people that, that were affected by that is not being addressed. They're probably just waiting for those people just to go away someday. And then the new generations hopefully will take over and everything will become more stable. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel pretty ripped off and I feel really sorry for the people that had to go through that and they're not getting any help right now. There's no help happening. And that, and Brocket 99, just promotes people to laugh at that. And that's terrible. Break away! Get out and take an Alberta break! Pack up the car, grab all your gear, and head out for the best time of the year! You can tour Rome, ride or glide, go outdoors, or stay inside! Take in a concert, go to a play, or head to the hills to a romantic hideaway! There's plenty of fun for everyone right here in your own backyard when you take an Alberta break! Now here's the break you've been waiting for! Hope to see you all at that big powwow coming up in Brockett on the 19th. You can stop by lots of hospitality gonna be lots of drinking and some indian artifacts on sale in the gift shop too come on by lots of hospitality even if you are a fucking whitey take an alberta break break away plan your alberta break today call travel alberta Drew, can you count backwards from 10? Nope. No, I, I was away that could. day in school. <laughs> hey, my name is Drew Hayden Taylor. I'm an award-winning uh, playwright, author, journalist, filmmaker, scriptwriter. I've listened to the, the tape of Brock at 99, and I, I have said I have mixed feelings about it. The positive thing I can say is the production values on the tape are quite good. I mean, obviously, the people who did this tape have a strong background in radio production. 
they're in Brockett, they see the occasional drunken Indian, they, they use that as their anchor and wrap their story around it, and using the misfortune of a handful of people as the focus for the show, so they take a little slice of familiarity, a little slice of, of um, understanding, and give it, blow it completely out of proportion, giving it an ultimate reality. One of the rules I use uh, in, in writing humor, and it was, it's not a rule I came up with, I picked it up from, from my elders and people I hung out with in the Native community, is that humor should amuse, not abuse. And a lot of the humor within uh, Brockett 99 uh, is uh, abusive. And I think that not only makes me uncomfortable, it makes everybody uncomfortable. There's a belief that in terms of cultural humor, humor only works from the bottom up. If you want to use um, socio-political paradigms, racism theoretically only works from the top down. That is to say, you have to be in a place of privilege in order to be uh, racist and, using the proper terminology, look down on somebody. They say it's impossible for somebody oppressed to be racist against somebody higher up. That is to say, it's impossible for a native person to be racist against a white person because the, par the power paradigm does not work in that favor. Racism only works from a position of power. And it doesn't work laterally either. For instance, I cannot be racist against a black person because we're not in positions of power. So I think in order for these people to make jokes about native people, they had to represent themselves as a less privileged, as more of an oppressed person in order to give the jokes a, r a ring of authenticity and um, humor. It's not as if we're coming from the perspective of don't dare make fun of us or, 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 or you're aggravating the situation. We make fun of ourselves a lot. But within the context of this particular tape, there's a, there's, a, there's a tone to it that makes me very, very uncomfortable. Would I want to completely ban that kind of thing? No, because it's, it becomes too much thought police like. It's like you got to take the good with the bad. Um, and for me to go around and say, you can't tell jokes like that, is like going around telling, telling it infringes on freedom of speech and of all that type of stuff. So it's like an unfortunate, necessary evil. But what do I know? I'm just an Indian. Here are today's Brockett funeral announcements. Joey Prairie Chicken was killed on Friday night when he was laying on the highway. They picked him up and brought him back yesterday. Funeral service is courtesy of Flying Chicken Funeral Home, interment to follow in Brockett Cemetery. Perry, broken head, was killed last weekend, but his body wasn't found until Thursday afternoon. He was pretty well decomposed by that time, but his family scraped enough money together, so they're having the funeral next Wednesday. Everybody that knew him is asked to please attend and bring a case of beer for the father-in-law. And finally today, Sammy shot both sides, was shot in the back on Friday. <laughs> and uh, we got a nice box. <laughs> we got a nice box for him. We'll be laying him out on Friday evening after the first one. Prayers will be said for him in the big teepee down by the outskirts of Brockett, half an hour before the funeral procession to the Brockett Cemetery. Once again, please bring case of beer for the family. I'm Scott Sackage. I'm an editor with the Lethbridge Herald. I've been there for uh, seven years. And I first heard Rocket 99 in the summer of 1988. Um, I bet you I'd probably listened to it for 20 minutes before I realized that it wasn't an actual radio station from Rocket. Uh, it took me a couple of minutes to, uh, to catch on to that. I think it's grown way out of proportion from what it was ever meant to be. It's become this, this phenomenon that, uh, that isn't 
that's no longer Brockett 99. It's people's perception of Brockett 99. Um, and the this weird cultural phenomenon of Brockett 99 that is somehow a hundred times more complicated than it was ever meant to be. And I think it may be a reflection of of this, the weird tension between white society and native society. I think because uh, the, the stereotype has been pushed so, it's, it's from generation to generation. You can go back to uh, the turn of the century and already there's this, there was the stereotype in place of the drunken native. Um, wasn't to be trusted, was lazy, wasn't gonna work, and uh, you know, would would bugger off back to the reserve if he ever gave him a job as soon as he got enough money. And that was passed on from, you know, my own my own grandfather's generation to my parents' generation and again to our generation. It's difficult to point a finger at Rocket 99 without pointing your nine other fingers back at yourself. Because I don't care who you are. Nobody sits and listens to Rocket 99 and just goes, oh, that's just terrible. I can't believe they're doing that. It's just, it's not possible, I don't think. People are gonna laugh at it. And you might feel very guilty after you laugh at it. And you may have good reason for feeling guilty. You may think that, geez, what have I just done? But you're gonna laugh at it. My favorite one. Okay, here's a here's a here's a joke that uh, uh, that I always liked telling. Guy sitting at home. Uh, here's a knock at the door. He goes he goes to the door. He looks down there. He sees a snail, and he sees the snail. He picks up the snail, throws it, and then uh, a month later, he's sitting in this house again. Knock at the door. Ding, 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 ding. The snail down there. The snail says, "What the hell did you do that for?" <laughs> ah, it makes me laugh. Mark Campbell, uh, born and raised in Lethbridge, Alberta. Went to school here, went to college here, got my first radio job here, and now work in TV. Work as the uh, TV weather guy and also do a global noon hour show. Brocket 99 is a tape that is uh, originally, I, from, as I understand it, to be a takeoff on radio. And the fact that they use the um, the native population as the kind of the vehicle to make humor out of it is, is was the a uh, couple of guys three or four guys maybe even five one main guy was the voice of Brockett 99 that I'm aware of that he got together with some another guy over a couple of drinks they uh, wrote some comedy material about a, a native radio station in Brockett Brockett 99 Brock was just a, it's a native reserve just outside of Lethbridge it was originally intended just to be something that they put together on tape. It was, it was supposed to be a fun thing. And they, uh, they put it on tape and all of a sudden, one guy copied it, another guy copied it, another guy copied it. And suddenly, over the course of a number of years, it was unbelievable how many tapes were made of it, how many people became aware of, of Rocket 99. And the reason that I got involved in it is because the one voice that's on there sounds an awful lot like me. And the fact that I've been in radio for 20 years in a recognizable voice, people made the assumption that I was involved with Brock at 99. I have become somewhat of a cult icon, just by virtue of uh, misinformation. Makes you wonder what sort of misinformation has happened throughout the, the course of history, doesn't it? Do you think Rocket was well made? No, <laughs> it's, it's crap. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's bad quality. You know, it's, uh, it was done in a studio with, uh, you know, on a, on a, on a reel-to-reel -reel machine. And uh, I think they, they probably put the pot up to get uh, echo. So no, it wasn't, it wasn't that good quality at all. <laughs> you know those guys? I don't know. <laughs> nice to see you, how are you? Yeah. Uh, that's my cousin. Cousin? <laughs> yeah. Good. How are you guys doing? Pita. Oh, it's getting hard out there. And we do yeah. not have enough 
Uh, we're trying Things to see that. Things supposed to go around. <laughs> a rain dance. Around. Okay, let's see the rain dance. Let's go. That's a, how does it go? <laughs> well, how does it go? How does it go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my <laughs> girl. Hey, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All of them brought it. Very <laughs> <laughs> nation. In trouble, ladies and gentlemen. You guys, you guys want to hear my joke? Yeah. <laughs> you get, these settlers are coming coming out. It's uh, and they're uh, they're moving out west, right? And then uh, so they're 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 camping overnight, and all of a sudden they hear hear these drums in the background. Boom, 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 boom. That's you. Yeah. It's boom, 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 boom. And then one guy says, "Hey, I don't like the sounds of those drums." And there's a guy in the bushes comes out and says, "Hey, it's not our regular drummer." <laughs> <laughs> Joe Holy's missing. <laughs> I missed that. Ah, it's okay. It's not that funny. I missed that joke. I'm on camera. Nice to see you guys. Nice evening. Yeah. You, you have a good one. See you yeah. later. See you. Take care. I was watching news. Yeah. Good. When's the weather going to come through? Anyway. Sunny. <laughs> see you, Mark. Take it easy. See you, my friend. We were we were here doing a doing a thing on St. Jean Baptiste Day and one of the natives. <laughs> nah, yeah, you don't want to, you don't want that on. Nah. No, it's, it's not good. It's not good. Well, so it's I not good No, I just, uh, I just don't, I don't want to be, uh, do, uh, it was just funny. So I'm not going to tell you what the story is. No. It would reflect poorly on, on them. And I don't want to show that. That wouldn't be very nice. Rocket 99. Not too many, not too many females I know of are, are, are you know, into that Brock 99 thing. I've gotten quite a few emails from female fans that are, you know, uh, requesting, you know, that they want pictures for their backgrounds on their computers and stuff, which I found was quite interesting. But uh, other than that, no, not too many, uh, not too many uh, girls I think are into it. For a while there, I was spending so much time on, my, on the website, I think my girlfriend was getting a little annoyed that I was spending more time on the website than I was with her. <laughs> when, why, and how? Uh, well, uh, I had nothing but time on, on my hands for about six weeks after I had knee surgery and uh, I really wanted to get into web design and, and putting up a website and I didn't want to, at first it started just as a hobby, like what am I going to do, I want to buy a domain name and, and I was like, and I, I sat on this for two weeks and I was like, what am I, I going to buy? And I just, Brock 99 popped in my head, I'm like, right on, Brock 99, you know. It's, become more of a hobby I guess it's something I just do I've been doing on the side and uh, it's didn't expect it to be this big it was more just started out as something I could just tell my friends about and then you know and then it would go from there but all of a sudden I start receiving emails mass bulk emails for people are sending out with you know pictures from my website brock99.ca and then from there the, tra the traffic went went through the roof and I was like wow I never intended to be this big and it just went kind of went over the top it's not intended to be a, uh, an Indian bashing website or anything like that. It's just, I guess it's more of a community for people to discuss Brock at 99. Um, they can bash Indians if they want, but they can also bash white people. They can bash whoever they want. That's why I have the forums on the website and I'm, I'm totally game, like uh, free speech is important. But um, uh, for me, it's just more, more of a community and you get the negative po comments, the positive comments. Negative feedback would obviously be people that are calling me a racist. Uh, telling me I have nothing better to do with my time than to poke fun at Indians. The positive feedback, I would, I would actually, that's a good point there, that I don't know if it's positive, because a lot of it is Indian bashing. I'd probably say a third of it is negative, or actually probably a quarter of it's negative. Half of it is, is positive towards the website in general, and then the other quarter would be, you know, when I say positive, I mean like, I guess it's, it's contributing to the, to the stereotype and the bashing. So I don't know if you would still consider that positive. Being from Lethbridge, I would consider it positive, and I don't want to, that's probably not that. But there's a lot of, a lot of uh, really, I guess, hardcore uh, 
anti, I don't know what, what the word to use is, but they are, they're, they're, they're really strong and believe in the stereotype. And sometimes they go overboard. And I don't say that I encourage it, but I'm not gonna stop it. It's not unusual to see you know, a, a drunk native stumbling through Galt Gardens or, or, uh, or bumming money off you or, or saying, you know, you took our land from us, whitey. You look at the houses and the way they live and it's just like, no respect, I guess, is the word to use, you know? Broken down houses, busted out windows, 10 cars in the driveway, fridges out on the lawn, things like that. It's just like, show some respect, you know? We're, we're helping you out, you know, at least appreciate it. This isn't my problem. You know, you guys have been paid back more than enough for what Canada has done to you. Now, so many years later, I think we've paid them back, we're even. And, and I think a lot of the discrimination with the white people, it does come from, you know, we give you all this money and we're still paying you back for, for something you're still crying over. It's uh, Ernie Scar in with you this morning. Time to get up, get at him here. It's uh, 11 and a half before 9 o'clock. We're taking a look at our reservation uh, funeral announcements here and some uh, some more ACDC coming up. Let's go to the phone lines here. Hello? <coughs> oh, yeah. Is that parade on today? Uh, what uh, parade is that? The one down by the liquor store. Is that on? No, it's not. What? Uh. Where you well, when is that, that going by the, the Java shop there in Where? Fort McLeod? Calling from Fort McLeod. Oh, we don't cover that. Oh. Only Brockett. Oh, I thought you had a schedule of everything. No, this no. is just the Brockett station. That, I thought you, you had have to, some other... You have to phone Fort McLeod. Oh. Fort McLeod. Okay, well, fuck you. I don't need you fucking assholes. I'll look in the fucking paper. All right, rock and roll. It's early scarring with you this morning. How you doing? A reservation time to get up and get at them. If you got a job to go to today, it's going to be tough if you're working outside. Not a very good day. Kind of gray, kind of overcast. Let's take a look at the forecast. Reservation weather. As a matter of fact, 30% chance of rain today. Look for a high of six, low overnight tonight of zero, and a chance of frost. Cover up the stinkweed. Winds west today, 37, gusting to 55, 40% chance of showers overnight tonight. Weekend's going to be cloudy and cool. Stay in and stay warm today if you can. Six degrees right now. From Rocket 99, rocking the teeth. You know what, Ernie Scar would make an excellent Powell MC. I think he would, you know? <laughs> I think Ernie Scar would make a super MC. So whoever he was is a big mystery. And uh, I'm sure you guys know who he is. <laughs> Don't want to tell us, <laughs> but that's fine, that's okay. My name is Trevor Prairie Chicken. Uh, well, I'm from the Blackfoot Confederacy, I'm Bikani. I work for the Hit Smash and Buffalo Jump. As a cultural program coordinator, uh, and uh, part of the cultural programs we do are educating non-natives about the First Nations Blackfoot culture in the best way that we can. I get all kinds of ignorant comments uh, from our campers, but I don't take it in a way of being um, racist. I take it as information because these people still don't know anything. They don't understand, so that's why they say, oh, do you Indians... Um, you're always taking the tax money, you know, we give you handouts and then, you know, I let them speak and then I say, no, it's not really like that. This is how, let's go back in time and I'll tell you from the beginning what has happened to our people, you know. And then so you take all that, that whole entire um, culture that we used to have before the coming of Europeans and then you build and then look at the history. And then it's all been compiled and then you look at the loss of the the genocidal loss of the culture the language and our lifestyle go to the residential schools 
you know, then you go to the Mr. Um, uh, or Miss, Miss Prickly Bush, maybe she's, she's a, a wino on the street. You get up to that stage, okay? Now, you get some guys who think, think it, you know, think that all this is kind of hilarious because they only see Miss Prickly Bush, but they don't see uh, um, the actual survival of the culture. But they see the comedy in that. So, is is this Brocket ninety nine? Is is this stigma the stigma that you know these people have? Where does it really come from? You know, who occupies that knowledge and that brain that brain wave to, to actually and to actually pass it on to other people? Like, where does that come from? Eh? Who knows? It, it does, but it does come from somewhere. And like I said. You know, thieves are lazy people and racists are lazy people because they don't take time to work and understand. You know, a, a thief will, won't say, well, I gotta go work hard, you know, I gotta find my job because I want a stereo. Well, he's gonna be lazy, he'll sleep till noon and he'll go out and he'll steal it, you know, and somebody will get hurt. Then you look at a racist and, you know, in the same sense is that, well, he's lazy because he won't go out and learn and understand another person's culture. And does this, this, this racist really have culture? What kind of culture does he have? Right? Yeah, that's what it's all about. Many native people will be out this weekend drinking, yelling, loitering. What are you doing about it? Help us. When you see a drunken native, put them in your trunk and take him out of town. It's the least you can do. Sometimes when you guys be filming people, when you guys be filming people, do you guys sometimes meet people that are very hostile, uh, unhospitable? Oh, do you guys yeah. ever meet people like that? Everything is uh, in sync. Arvin and Jim, take one. When I when I listen to it, I laugh at it. It's yeah. very funny. Yeah, it's I very I funny. find it very funny. And plus, they had some fucking good rock and fucking tunes, eh? When I heard it. I wasn't Sir living Charles on Tupper. the reserve. I didn't have no um, previous reservation experience, for lack of better terms. I was brought out, brought up in the white community, and uh, when I heard it, I thought it was funny. When when people come up to you and they talk and they try to imitate us, that's the way they sound. That's the way they, you know. So that's why I could accept it because it's just one of those things, you know. You have people that are always trying to imitate. Pakistanians, you have people that are trying to imitate um, any, any nationality out there and they try to get that accent, whether it's Britons, whether it's whoever, and they get it wrong, it sounds funny. And so that's the way I look at it. Bobby. Yeah, exactly. I just I just laugh because in my eyes, it was just somebody trying to be an impersonation of, of us. Of, but you hear it all over the place. A few people got really offended. Especially when they heard their relatives died on this tape and uh, they didn't really die. Or uh, people got, uh, they're going to the courts or the obituary parts were pretty bad. Like they'd say someone was dead and they're still alive and you know, it was kind of fucking bullshit, man. I really didn't fucking, I really didn't like that. Southern Alberta is very racist, but that's not yeah, painting the racist, whole Southern region itself. with the same paintbrush because that's not right, that's not fair. I haven't gotten good jobs around here since the early 90s. Shit, it's the early 2000s and fuck. That's what kind of hurts me because fuck. I don't like being on fucking social assistance. Who wants to fucking live off 380 a month? Fuck. Oppressed. The, the, the white society out here has it's to oppression. give us more of a chance because we're not all fuckheads. It's not we, assimilation we can, we can anymore. It. We can make it. We can make it. During the, the late 70s, early 80s. We got kids 80s. that have birthdays that need 
that need it was assimilation nowadays need money it's oppression you're getting the cruisers now it's starting to get dark <laughs> If you ever want to look down the barrel, you're more than happy. If you want to look at anybody else, you're more than happy. I think but... that's kind of cheesy, though, when you're starting to... <laughs> yeah. But some people hey. really feel... Some people have some comments sometimes that they feel they want to say right Say right to the camera. Hi, I'm Sandy Payne, and I live in Pincher Creek. I've lived here for about five years now, and I grew up in Cardston, which was kind of where I initially heard of Brock at 99. On the surface, it's it's a funny thing, but when you start digging deeper, it's it's comic level sort of is replaced by a lot of our own personal ironies and how we perceive other people and other cultures. For me, I think anytime you're trying to break the ice between two cultures, that opens it up for discussion and dialogue, which may or not, may not bring forward issues, but at least it breaks the ice, and I found that that was one of the things that um, at least drew attention to some of the issues that natives have. I'm just really appalled at what we have done in the last 250 years to aboriginals. We've pretty much decimated their whole culture. We've destroyed any opportunities that they may have had to create an indigenous people that has a lot of pride and a lot of dignity and, and certainly we've treated them with very little respect. And I know that sounds really arrogant and pious coming from me, but, but I've seen it from both sides. And um, I think a lot of people are pretty arrogant when it comes right down to it. And I think that there's that arrogance um, overrules the whole willingness to exchange ideas and to, to really um, look for answers within ourselves. There has to be some conflict, you, you know, like in order to get the issues out, to present them forward so that we, we aren't so arrogant in our thinking. You know, we're more acceptance and we do take ownership and we do take responsibility for our own opinions and our own perceptions or misperceptions. And, you know, if, if things happen in a positive response, that's good. Sometimes they have to grow into a negative one before, before the positive can occur. And if it starts with comedy and laughter, I think that's so much the better.
guy from Siksika invited us to your reserve yesterday. Oh, was that right? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I invite you here. Yeah. Just respect the land. Where are you from? <laughs> Siksika. <laughs> wait a minute. Respect the land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, my name is uh, Kirby Smith. I work in the, uh, in the Buchanan Nation administration. I'm the chief executive officer for the administration. Uh, I was born and raised, of course, on, on the reserve. I have a wife. Uh, she's from the Blood Tribe, Rowan, and four kids, Godfrey and Dylan, Justice and Jordan. Do you ever hear Brock and I now? Yeah, I, I, I listen to the tape, yeah. I listen to the whole thing. I think the impact was, was humorous, eh? Hey? Because uh, obviously, I mean, it, it is funny. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, think it is funny. And then I think what happened is probably people started talking about, well, um, you know, this is this is racist. This is this is racism. Um, and then and then at the same time, other people, like even though even though maybe one group would would take a view like that, another group would be like, well, you know, chill out. It's not 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 that big of a deal. It's just some white guys fooling around, you know, with some studio equipment, you know, doing something stupid. It's, you know, not, not to be taken uh, so liberally. And I think, I think that in itself is, is a good thing, you know, that people aren't all angry about it or people aren't all passive about it, but that there's a mix, you know, because I think the mix in itself, uh, you know, shows that there's a lot of uh, diversity in the community. And I think, Diversity is, is really healthy for any community because they can't, you know, you don't want to get, you don't want to get too, um, you know, too too complacent. I think because I think when you when you do that, uh, the learning stops. Part of our experience as a community, or part of our experience as a collective, was that, um, you know, we we've like we've had a tough go of of our of our well the development of our society but only in relation to the development of Canadian society at the same time. So, for example, um, and, and just maybe the, a good starting point would be prior to the signing of, of, of treaties. Hey? Um, treaties were, were in, in, in the minds of, of people at the time, were an agreement, an agreement to share resources. You look at how much was given up, both in, in land, but also the value of the land over the years since it was since we were on this reserve. I mean, it, the numbers are, are astronomical. And then at the same time, you know, people argue, well, but we're still giving them this, you know, this money without taking into consideration how much we've given up as a people. And I think, I think that, that, uh, that attitude, that mentality is what really bothers people. So really, I think, if, if in, again, all things equal, I think if there was a real intention to share the land, the relationship would have been a lot different. I think if there was a real intention to, to be, um, you know, to, to really look out for the well-being of people, I think that, that uh, it would have taken place. But it didn't. And so when something like Brock in 99, it's just some sort of adding wood to the fire kind of thing. I mean, on top of being shafted by the government, we're also getting, you know, um, we're also uh, victims of racism, you know, at the same time by, by general, by the general, you know, Canadian society. So that, and I think people, some people have really taken a, an offense to that. And so when this whole Brocket 99 thing came, up, came up about, people who were familiar and, and, and had, taken the, had taken an offense to the relationship that, that we have had with the federal government, um, you know, Brock and I didn't do anything to, to help the matter, basically. And I think that's probably what, what some of the views still are today. I think if people were to, were to take the time, you know, to, to come into the community, uh, you know, see how we live and, and, and maybe, um, you know, try to understand some of the challenges that we face, I think it would eliminate a lot of that. But uh, as it is, you know, the, and, I hate, and I hate saying that, I hate saying, well, that's just the way it is. Hey, but it's, you know, the, the reality is there isn't, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there isn't some, there isn't, you know, promotional material for Indians, you know, uh, in, any, on any, in any community. Uh, but we, we try to do our best to, to, you know, invite people in um, and, and sort of try to, and I think at this point now in, in the development of, of, of uh, reserves in Canada, we're just, starting to open the doors you know to people to to see uh, 
what, what we're all about. Okay? Jaren Wieselbear. I am the male instructor here for the Nipomo Geek Society. And what I'm here to instruct the boys is just the male role in society today and teaching them about their culture, TP making, drum making, and how to, the etiquette of the ceremony. A big thing for us here to teach the kids actually is learning respect and also responsibility and their roles as the females and within our culture. And so what we do is we actually do come in and teach the kids a lot of things that they need to know, but also how to incorporate it out into their Western world. And each year, the, the detail and it goes more in depth and more coverage. And the main goal is to, give, is to teach these kids our Blackfoot culture because it was lost, and it's good to start at, it, at the, the young generation in what we are doing. Does everybody remember what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. It's okay, just get in the circle. Hurry, you guys, pull up the circle. Come here. Come on, you guys. Boys, hurry. Dancing and 
women's dancing, and this and that competition is only about two feet of the styles and power. And this is certainly probably one of the first, first bands that ever had a power where they were uh, inviting in visitors and dancers from different parts of Indian country. So, looks like we're all ready to go. This is all we need. We'll probably make some more additions during the year. But uh, this is just about right. All we need is this. All the flight carriers and everybody else that's going to participate in the grand entry, please make your way up to the east end of the harbor as we're going to start our celebrations here this evening with the first grand entry of the 46th Annual Bikani Nation Powwow. Albertine Koshu, I'm the manager of Kagan Crafts. Everything is done here in, in our building. I'm gonna take you to the back first, where the line starts. This is our new office, and this is our new, new product that we carry. And this is the one that um, we use in the, the dancing, traditional dancing and ceremonies. In Edmonton, last year, and one girl came by and she saw our tag and she said, oh, you're from Brockett? And I said, yes, the Bikani Nation. And she said, oh, have you ever heard of Brockett 99? And I said, yeah. And I, I was really turned off by that. And she said, um, she said, oh, it's all in fun. And I said, well, but I didn't really think so. Like, it really turned me off. I didn't like what she had to say. And I told her that that wasn't our, it wasn't our community, what our community was about. You know, so you're not looked on as, as um, a sustaining community. You know, as somebody who's, as a community that's um, where people live and that, that's the, the livelihood in the community, the, the whole, the families, where people come from. You know, they, they, they take that away. They've taken that away from how people view us here. You know, they're not familiar with our lifestyle or our relationships or everything else that makes it makes us up for who we are yeah but it, yeah like I said it's, it's all over the place and, and the media it does play a big part in, in keeping that stereotype alive and the racism and I guess Brock at 99 is, is <clears throat> just a, a sample of that what the media keeps alive chooses I don't know what they put out there you know and if people don't know the other side of that then they'll um, they won't know any different, you know? They won't know any different because they're born into that conversation. And if they don't hear another conversation, they're gonna, you know, just keep that, that same conversation alive about who Native people are, the stereotypes of Native people. You know, we're not a rich community. But it doesn't mean that we're not proud. For the first time on the 46th annual,
everybody parties, right? Where everybody goes and has their uh, after the bar little session here. It's what we call a 49er, almost. Yeah. yeah so uh, what is this gonna happen now, or what's gonna yeah, happen? Yeah, well, let's go. We'll move. Uh, let's go to my uh, vehicle, just over this side, right, right by the hand game, so, okay? Cool. Silly women, I'm Millie with the Dilio. Hit you with the shit, make you feel it on your toes. You don't know if you're fucking with me, I'm playing pros. I'll do that in black, but yeah. it's a butt skin, scoots, be a bust down, and it's good to get these two books, a kind of copy. Hunt. My name is Cowboy Smith. That's not a stage name. That is my real name. Well, I really hope that someday I get to meet the Ernie Scar himself, because, um, you know, I, I'm not one of the ones that's angry at him, you know. I'm, I'm actually quite... Uh, uh, appreciative of what they've done with that particular production because it's inspired me tons, tons. Like everything that I, my whole uh, sense of humor is sort of circulated around Brockett 99 because I got everything. You know, I got all the jokes that they were saying. I knew eventually that they were non natives making these, and that's why I was really, you know, when I was young, I thought it was, you know, a native production. You know, I thought it was our friends from Kainai trying to diss Pikani, but that's not how it went. The misconceptions that it was, you know, not a stereotype, that was, that was the facts, you know, the way, the way Brockett 99 was put together, that was how Brockett was, but, you know, it wasn't cleared up, the air wasn't clear, you know, everyone just, you know, thought, okay, well, Brockett 99, the tape stopped, you know, side two is done, that's how Brockett is, so if I go to Brockett, I'm gonna pick up some maggots at Hunt and Hook Sports, you know, there's gonna be drunks all over the place, they're just, it just wasn't, um, it's really one-sided, I guess. Over the last 20 years, alcoholism amongst natives has been a real serious problem. And uh, I think because in the city streets and whatnot, that's all you saw with natives. You saw was drunk Indians. That's all you saw. You... The guys who made Brock in 99, I'm sure they didn't take the time to come to something like this, something traditional like a powwow or a sun dance and see the, uh, the other side of, of native life, right? There's many elements to it and the whole alcoholism, drunk Indian side, it's just one small aspect that, uh, that's just, you know, it's just so up in your face. That's why it, there was such an emphasis on it. You know, you're not going to get one consistent opinion about Brock in 99. You're going to get, oh yeah, I loved it, you know, it, it, you know it's, it represents us somehow, somewhat, you know, just funny. And there are going to be people who say that's an ignorant, blatant, racist, piece of shit, crap thing, don't listen to it, don't promote it. The perspectives from the young people, the old people, they're all different. You're not going to get anything that's going to be even remotely the same. Everybody's got their own views. And mine, I believe, you know, it was racist. I, I will go ahead and say that, that it was racist, but it was also very fun. So it's sort of a stalemate, you know. You've got good old humor versus racism, and they're, they're, they're together, you know. It's like, um, it's, like, uh, it's like a mad cow, you know. It's like a mad cow, you, you're starving, you need that steak, but it's a mad cow steak. Cowboy standing with a bunch of real cowboys. It's a weird situation. Okay, well, we'll start here with Floyd Smith. Yes. This and is my Viagra. grandfather. We don't need Viagra if you're a cowboy. But wise, you <laughs> serves just as good. Viagra. Okay, and I haven't met this gentleman, so, so introduce yourself. My name's Lenny Little Bear. Lenny Little Bear, right here. And this one here is infamous. <laughs> infamous. Stephen Brewstead. Howdy. Uh, what, what do you think of Brock and Did it piss you off? What's Hell no. No, no. It's, no it's, it's, just, it's just life and reality. If you can't, if you can't accept life, then geez, got, get a goddamn education or something. You know the thing about this Brock at 99? You see a lot of people. Like, take the 
Calgary Stampede. There's people around that want to bar road you. Every them bastards got a life. Bitching about something that's none of their damn business. It's Alberta tradition. Rocket 99. Shit. Look at it. Listen to the damn thing and 90% of it is true <laughs> regarding <laughs> First Nations people. But then you reverse it. White people go through the same situation, so why should we isolate one ethnic group and get pissed off about it? You look at uh, that program, uh, this hour has 22 minutes, and it's the same damn thing. If you're thin-skinned, if you're thin-skinned, you'll feel insulted about something. But you can look at the humor, you look at the reality of what some of them people are saying. It is true, it happens. Only they come out in sort of a humorous manner, you know. I agree with what was said. Yes. Well, I have a question for you, Floyd. Uh, you know the last names of Native people. You know, there's like Little Wolf and Mini Fingers and all of these names. You know, uh, Brock '99 took a couple shots. Like, uh, there's a last name they use was Squirrel Nuts, and I wanna, I wanna know what you think of that, uh, that the play on the last names of Native people. Is that something? That, what's your opinion on that, basically? To me. You know, like, uh, let me tell you something. Okay. In the old days, it, uh, names were given for happiness, something happening. Can you imagine if there was condoms there in those days, condoms? Condoms? Yes, if there were condoms and somebody was knocked up with the guy having a condom, and he'd be we called broken here. rubber. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying, you know, you're never going to get a consistent opinion about Brock 99 from Native people because the opinions are all over the spectrum. They're left, they're right, they're in the center. No matter what you do, no matter how many times you're trying to read it, whatever, Brock 99 will never die. And the only way you're going to kill it is if you wipe out all of its fans. Jamie Basti, delete all of the files. And it's very weird that. Keep rolling. Don't by Andy Stump. My name is uh, Cowboy, and we're at this rodeo, and I'm an Indian. I know you feel like I feel. I appeal to the real. Based skill skill alone, I'm a cop a good deal. I'ma make my people proud of how I show steel. Get rappers so shook without showing great steel. This is a message to my people. Stand tall and stay strong. This goes to the youth from your elders in the form of a song. We losing many by the hand, but what we doing wrong? We lost the love and the will to carry on. So I look to the wisdom. I gotta get it before we're gone. Cause believe me, it hurts like the melody from sad songs. I look to the class for Irene's love and blessing. Touch just like the rain. All the tears I'm shedding, man. I gotta carry on. My family needs me. Please believe me. It's a sharp pain that got me queasy. But my heart is with you. Send blood in the veins. Keep telling myself everything will be okay, man. Yeah, yeah, everything will be okay, man. All my native people stand up and I know you feel like I say Cause I feel the same way every day, man. Listen. I know you feel like I say But you gotta understand all my native people. That's why we've got love that's How's it going so far? Oh really hectic, but we got a really good crowd. Good, good singers and good drummers. Tonight we have another traditional and then we have a um, uh, Iron Man, fancy man, fancy, like a sort of an endurance. The Iron Man, yeah, I've heard yeah, about that. Yeah, go, yeah. go till you drop? Well, no, like what <laughs> happens is dance, and then the guys will get tired and they'll kind of slow down. It looks, they'll act like, they think, you know, people don't really see them. But while well, the, the judges, what they'll do is, as soon as they see somebody slowing down, they'll go and they'll tap them off. Well, good day. Uh, my name is Tob Tobias Provost. I'm the manager of our economic development department here with the nation. I'm also, uh, I coordinated uh, this event for the weekend. We've, we've done, I, we, well, me and my, my um, committee, we've been doing this for about, since 1990, off and on. So we've, I think this is our fifth time. Yeah, I heard about it back in, I think it was 1989. It was in the late 80s. My cousin, he, uh, he, uh, he came over and he said, check this tape out. And, I started listening to it, 
And then I was, I was, I was, I was wondering if it was like what it was, like if it was a real radio station or somebody was, was uh, if somebody was like playing a joke. And then I started listening, and it started getting funny, and I started laughing. But near the end, I started, I was, I started getting upset. I know, I know. One time, I took a sociology class, and they were talking about this concentric circle that was created. Uh, there was, they used this uh, University of Toronto used. Uh, they looked at native people where native people are in society and they said they use a concentric circle and they said that we're the, at the periphery of society and it was based on racism, stigmatization, acceptance, you know, the, the values of society, the, how, how society views social mobility, materialism, you know, uh, education, academia, objectivity, all those types of things. If, you're, if, you, if you attain those, those, those attributes, then you're sort of accepted as part of, I guess, a Canadian. But for us, you know, like for us as, as, as First Nation, as Aboriginal, as, as Blackfoot Pagan people, you know, we're still not accepted in that. And so this, this tape, it just, it just, it just shows that it's, 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 there, it's, a, it's sort of the collective's view of us. And for us as, as Native people, we accept that, you know, like, would you really look at where we are today? We still own all this country. This this country still belongs to us. All the natural resources, everything that that this country has has took from us and built this beautiful this this country, this society. We still own everything, but it's like it's like uh, you know we're blocked. But we're we're seen as we're seen as barriers to development. And today we're still we're still seen that way. I'm not gonna you know beat myself till I'm blue in the face to try to tell them to understand about me. That's, that's their, that's that, like, it's up to them if they want to do that. But for me, you know, like, what we need to do is, uh, what we, like, what we need to do is we need to understand, you know, uh, like, our, our history and who we are and, we, and, and our, our people, our young people, we got to maintain our traditions and our cultures and our connections to the land and, and through, by doing that, we empower ourselves, you know. And whatever, if society can't accept that, well, that's their problem, it's not ours. We're here to maintain our, our nations, you know, to rebuild our nations again. Well, where are we going to go? <laughs> you know, back across the Bering Strait. <laughs> Russians will kick us out. <laughs> Do my best. Okay, sounds good. Sometimes you have so much to say and you kind of lose control and you go off on a tangent. So. Well, that's fine, and I'm sure you'll reference. If you're on a tangent, I'm sure you'll reference to what the tangent is. Or sometimes point. you forget the question and you go back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, my name is Celeste Strikes with again. I live here on the reserve. I've been here uh, all my life except to uh, go off the reserve for uh, things like work and that's it okay I remember hearing the tape um, or parts of it and um, I've heard speculation on who may have been responsible for uh, producing that tape and I think one of the things that's important to look at is not so much what's happening here with the pagan people and I spell uh, people with a capital P um, it's to look at uh, the context uh, giving rise to the production of that tape. Uh, it's more than discrimination, it's hate. And if you go beyond that and look at the Canadian government and what's happening internationally, uh, the Canadian government is a developed country and it goes to these international meetings, uh, UN meetings, and um, it comes across like it's really doing good um, to uh, treating the indigenous peoples good, but um, they're leading uh, the oppression, the racism, the hate. And uh, that's very, very unfortunate. I think what has happened is people aren't educated and sometimes uh, people really don't see um, uh, the, um, the thinking the mindset behind uh, 
the humor uh, that they immediately uh, react to. And, uh, and I can say that um, only the rich white people can be educated. The rest of us, uh, we're lucky we're trained, but at best we're indoctrinated. And um, I think those are things that are very important. If you want to stop and we can start this after the parade again, yeah. there's the parade. have been in a position to be self-sufficient. We can still be. But Western society does not want us to be human beings who can, can make money. Uh, they have this mindset that if, um, if you're an indigenous person, pagan, blackfoot, whatever, you can't make money off the environment. Only white entrepreneurs and um, I know that maybe some people are still uh, trying to do something so that they can make money. But um, it's impossible. And with this river, this um, river, uh, we could be making some kind of economic livelihood so that um, no one has to be on welfare. But no, we can't make money. The land is what it all comes down to. And uh, one of the things that um, I see that um, we have to deal with every day is that the government wants to terminate us. Um, genocide is happening. Ooh, just <laughs> Thank you. We'll make it a warmer conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, um, ooh. Yeah, so that's, uh, I guess that's where the basic problem is. Uh, what they want to do is they want to come and develop the land. And this reserve stands in the way of development. Why do you, why do you battle on that? Okay, it's interesting to see, to hear you see it as a battle. Right now, society has become so apathetic that, uh, that it's unusual to hear anyone who has some ideas. And I'm not the only one. What is, you know, and I'm sure people ask this about themselves. Why am I alive? What, what am I doing in this, um, in this existence? Uh, if I wanted to, I could play the game, and I could be very good at playing the game uh, if I wanted to. Um, I choose not to because it's a very um, uh, lifeless existence uh, where you um, where you conform. Uh, it comes down to a decision of uh, choosing to be alive or not. There. There. Hey, why don't you interview me? I'll talk politics. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, um, where do you come from? Uh, I live in Vancouver right now. I grew up in Prince George. I'll tell you something. I'll only tell you once. You know what wrecks us Indian people? It's alcohol. And the government doesn't care about us. He hits hard penalties on us. <clears throat> yeah. That's the problem with this reserve. I'll tell you straight in. You want to know? Want to bring this film on? Yeah. My auntie, just one thing, I'm one smart dude. What really wrecks us people is alcohol in this reserve. There's a lot of people on welfare around here. You know, I'll tell you a lot. This is my country. I lived here all my life. 
I'm sorry to say I'm talking like this, but I hope you all broke open up my heart. Me and Masita B come from the heart. This band is so much in debt. That's why we gotta volunteer. We gotta volunteer and so that way the money goes back to our bills and we can pay it off. And all these people that work off the reserve, they try hard, they got good, they, they got skills. We gotta pick them up and listen, listen to them. All this money is coming around. And these Indian people around here, they leave the reserves because they have no home. No place to stay, no food to eat. Wanna talk politics? I know politics. I'm a young boy, but I see a lot of shit. I shouldn't be talking like that. But that's where I come from. Me and Is that, is that, what is that? It's, I can't pronounce what you just said. Means, uh, myself. As a person. That's what it means. That's where we gotta come from. Thank you very much, Adam. 